What's up, everybody? Welcome back to our Kratom Addiction and Recovery Daily Devotional Series. So we're in our study in Job right now, and we left off last week where Job is having this conversation with his friends, and multiple friends have been coming by and just questioning why he ended up in the position that he was in where he had lost everything. He lost his wealth, his livelihood, his health was affected, his family. And so a big chunk of Job is this conversation between him and his friends. So that's where we are today. And over the next uh, probably two, three days, we're just going to wrap up that conversation that he's having before we get into the really beautiful, cool part of Job. And it's probably my favorite part in the Bible, actually. I have lots of favorites, but there is something about the end of Job where God speaks to Job and explains to him who he is and what he's about. And it is some of the most beautiful poetry I have ever heard. So we're going to spend these next two, three days wrapping up this uh, conversation that Job is having with his friends and then we're going to move into the really beautiful, poetic part of this book by the end of the week. So, okay, today we're going to be in Job chapter 22, and we're going to be in verses 21 through 28. And this is Job's friend saying to him, Submit to God and be at peace with him. In this way, prosperity will come to you. Accept instruction from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. If you remove wickedness far from your tent and assign your nuggets to the dust, your gold of Ophir to the rocks and the ravines, then the Almighty will be your gold. The choice is silver for you. Surely then you will find your delight in the Almighty and will lift up your face to God. You will pray to him and he will hear you and you will fulfill your vows, your vows. What you decide on will be done and light will shine on your ways. So this is a huge conversation between Job and his friends. And we're picking out little key moments from this conversation to reflect on. And so the reason why we chose this today is because there is some cool stuff in here and it's said in this really beautiful poetic way. And so what we're going to talk about today is uh, what it means to submit to God. And it starts off by saying to submit to God and be at peace with him. In this way, prosperity will come to you. It, accept instruction from his mouth and lay up his words in your heart. If you return to the Almighty, you will be restored. So submission to God, like, I get it. A lot of us who are coming from places where we're not sure about this whole God thing, maybe some of us were raised, like, in organized religion or had overly religious parents or relatives or whatever that left a bad taste in our mouth about God, and like we've talked about in a lot of these other studies, there are some things and some words that can really turn people off. And submission to God is probably one of them. And so we're going to look at this today and break this down because there is value and wisdom in this that we can apply to our own addiction and recovery processes. Um, so submission, you know, when we submit ourselves to something, that means that we are laying down our own desires and we are uh, submitting to the better good of God in this case. We can submit ourselves to things that are not good. A lot of us find ourselves in a position of submission to our addictions to Kratom. A lot of ourselves 
uh, find a lot of us, excuse me, find ourselves in positions where we submit in unhealthy relationships to people who, you know, we are giving the power to. That's also a good way to describe submission is that when we submit to something, we are giving the power to that. And so that's why submitting to God is so important. And it's such a good thing. And I know that it can, you know, maybe stir up some things that some of us don't want to think about or feel. But ultimately what this is doing is that when we submit to God, we are giving him the power. Um, for me, I don't know about for you, but I didn't have the strength to get out of my Kratom addiction on my own. I did not have the power to get out of my Kratom addiction on my own. Kratom had the power over me. And so when I found myself in a place where I didn't know how I was going to get out of it, that's when I submitted to God. And I saw this amazing thing that happened afterwards where like, you know, I, I gave God the power instead of trying to find it inside of myself or, you know, in some person, place or thing around me. That was something that I, when I was in my new age beliefs for all of those years, I thought that I had the answers inside of myself. I ultimately looked at myself like I was my own God. I also looked at nature through like plants and trees and animals and that kind of thing. Like, you know, they were reflections of God as well. So I would look to things like that, like in nature as like where I would, you know, search for strength and for insight and for you know, to be able to help me to do the things that I needed to do. And so when it came down to being in this Kratom addiction, none of this stuff could help me, but God could. And by submitting myself to God, I gave him the power to, to help me with that. So what does it look like to submit to God? To me, I think it's a very simple thing. You know, it's, it's, humbling ourselves before God and and exalting him into his rightful standing in our lives and over everything that we have going on and by just saying very simply you know it doesn't even need to be words that you say out loud it can be something that you say inside of yourself that like you know I surrender God you know you you are in control you are sovereign you have the power you know, please strengthen me, please guide me. And by going through that act of submission, by humbling ourselves before God, it is amazing what happens. And I've gone through that personally, where I have seen the power and the strength of God play out in my life and literally pull me out of the addiction that I was in. So that's like how it can look like. Um, I love this part that says if you return to the almighty you will be restored if you remove wickedness far from your tent and assign your nuggets to the dust your gold of ophir to the rocks in the ravines then the almighty will be your gold the choicest silver for you that's so cool that's such a cool like poetic explanation of you know like restoration that comes from god and, you know, like, what's that mean? If you remove wickedness far from your tent and assign your nuggets to the dust, man, to me, I interpret this as that, like, when we turn away from what we are doing, that is not cool anymore. When we, when we turn away from our addictions, when we turn away from the things that are not right for us to be doing and assign your nuggets to the dust. You know, like our our money, our wealth. Like if we if we don't glorify that, if we just, you know, turn away from all of that like sort of connection to like things of this world and like, you know, gold your gold nuggets to the dust. I that's what how I interpret it. That like, you know, it's nothing but dust. So like that's exalting God into his right standing over things like, you know, money and wealth and material possessions. 
your gold of Ophir to the rocks and the ravines, same kind of thing. It's like, you know, casting your your money and your gold into the ravines. And obviously, you know, it's it, this is not a literal thing where I am saying like, take your rent money and throw it into the ravine. That's not what we're talking about. We're talking about like metaphorically that like when we take things that would have that value to us in like, you know, the perspective of the world, like, you know, wealth, money, status, power, all of that stuff. And we just, you know, don't, you know, we don't give it that power anymore. We don't, we, we don't look at wealth and money and status and all of that kind of thing as anything like, you know, as anything good, really. That what that does is that exalts God into his right standing over those things in our lives. And then it goes on, and I love this so much. Then the Almighty will be your gold, the choicest silver for you. That is so cool. I love the wording of that. You know, gold is something that we equate with like wealth and status and uh, value. And we, when we can look at God in that way, like that he, he is our wealth. He is where we find our value. Man, I'll tell you, I have searched this earth and this world and this, you know, even beyond, beyond for like meaning and purpose. And I've chased money before. I've chased, you know, wealth and success and and all of that stuff in the world's eyes and nothing compares to God literally and you can't take any of that stuff with you when you go so like it's all meaningless it's all dust at the end you know but like God it, like finding our value in God is so incredible so then this verse goes on that like uh surely then you will find delight in the Almighty and you will lift up your face to God. You will pray to him and he will hear you and you will fulfill your vows. What you decide on will be done and light will shine on your ways. I don't know about you guys, but when my, I was in my addiction, I hit this certain point where like nothing was going right anymore. Like everything that I was doing for work, everything in my relationships, even my interactions in the grocery store, like all of it was like literally painful where like, it just, it, I, I felt, I remember thinking like, you know, what, like what is going on here? Like I got like all into conspiracies for a little bit when I was um, in the depths of my Kratom addiction. And one of the things that I was like getting spun out on was like this whole like gang stalking concept. And I, because I literally, and if you don't know what that is, like just look it up. There's a ton of people who are, you know, feeling that way about um, different aspects of their lives. And um, it, it's basically in a nutshell, if you haven't heard about it, it's where it's this theory that either people or government, or it can even take on like a spiritual nature where some people think it has, you know, like spiritual sources that, um, I don't want to get off on too much of a tangent, but it's basically like where you feel like everything and everyone is out to get you. And there's like this like nefarious plan and everybody is working together to like, basically like come against you and I literally like felt that way where like every single thing in my day every single time I would go anywhere I would just have the most horrible interactions and run-ins with people everything had fallen apart in the career path that I was in um, my health fell apart, like everything. And I literally thought that like everyone and everything was out to get me. And I realized now in my sobriety that like, you know, it's, it's very, it's a very simple, you know, thing that like what we put out there is what we get back. And I'm not talking about like, you know, what we sow is is what we reap and or like you know in the new age i thought it was karma i'm not talking about it on that level i'm talking about it like on a like it on a social and like interaction level where like 
people will vibe, you know, like if, if, if people sense that like you're anxious or you're uncomfortable or you're suspicious or you're paranoid, they may not be able to pinpoint it what exactly like you're feeling or like what your you know where your headspace is but they're still gonna know that like something isn't right and they're gonna pick up on that and so that's really what it was there wasn't any gang stalking there wasn't anybody out to get me it was because I was in a place in my addiction where I was hypersensitive to everybody and everything and I was like uh really like guarded and I would go out into the world with this you know fear basically that like you know everything and everybody was out to get me and so that was putting out like a like a um you know a, a vibe I don't know how else to, else to put it I don't mean that in like a new agey way I just mean it in like a you know very basic kind of like hippie lingo way sorry um but people pick up on that. People pick up on like how you're feeling and they sense it. And so um, I had the experience of that and I share it because it goes on to say that like, you know, when when we find delight in the Almighty and lift our face to God and when we pray to him, he will hear us and he will fulfill our, our vows and what uh, what we decide on will be done and light will shine on our ways. I just explained where I was at in my addiction and I, I was not feeling light shine in my ways and I was not feeling God like fulfilling my vows as you know in my life and like what I what I wanted to be doing and like accomplishing and everything and in sobriety I have lived this I have lived like God's light shining on my ways and like you know, going out into the world now and the world just like opening up before me and people, you know, meeting the most amazing people and like being in this place now where like I'm through all of this, like, you know, this pain and this suffering. So what I'm able to bring to the world, I'm able to receive back from it through people, interactions, you know, the work that I do, all of this. I'm not saying this in a prideful way. I'm just using it as a way to illustrate what we're learning about and focusing about right now that like, you know, when, when we get out of this, this addiction, when we, you know, submit to God and we understand what that is and we allow him to take his rightful standing in our lives. And then we move on to like, you know, reestablish what our values are, what we find value in, what our wealth truly is, which is God. And then when, you know, we find delight in the Almighty and we pray to Him and we see this light, you know, shine upon our lives and our paths, it's absolutely amazing. Is it perfect? No, nothing is ever perfect. We still have our challenges. But I share this with you, um, hopefully, so that if you're in that place where you're in that darkness, in that addiction, that you'll know that I went through it and that I came out of it and that it's possible for you too as well. So um, I love you guys. We're going to pick up tomorrow in Job. Feel free to share how you're doing in the comment section and I'll see you tomorrow. Love you. Bye.